What is going on friends? It is Ben with Bearded Spruce back for another video. This time we were in my basement shower, which we are working hard as you can see. We're most of the way through it. Uh, we've done the wall tile as well as some of the grouting and we just need to finish things up. Super exciting project. Today we're going to do something pretty quick and easy. As I was tiling this shower and my wife and I were working on it, I started thinking, man, it would have been really nice to know all the things that we know now when we tiled our first project, or especially our first shower. We've done backsplashes and floors and walls and all kinds of stuff, but there's something special about tiling a shower. I don't know what it is, but it's just a different beast of its own. So in this video, I'm not going to walk through the entire project. I'm actually just going to dive into the top five tips that I would have loved to know when I tiled my first shower. I really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe to see more of my content. I do mostly around the house projects as well as I'm uh, working on a 1972 Airstream. I really try to think through what would you guys enjoy and learn from and what do I tend to look up when I'm about to tackle a project. And I try to base all my content on that, especially the stuff around the house. So feel free to like and subscribe my channel or just watch it. Uh, I typically put some links in the description below that are affiliate links that if you click through and buy anything on Amazon, I get a few pennies here and there. Um, so I really appreciate you watching, first of all, and then uh, feel free to leave comments below, questions, videos that you'd want to see in the future. Also, stick around for the end of this video because I have one extra tip that takes your DIY shower project to the next level. It really kind of takes what someone would walk into a bathroom and think, oh yeah, that's definitely a DIY project to that level of maybe this is a professional shower. Um, so stick around to the end of this video to check that out. Otherwise, let's get into it. So number one thing that I wish I would have known before getting started tiling a shower is how to properly waterproof the material. So you see on this side, it doesn't have towel yet. You might be able to read that it's cement board. Um, cement board by itself is not waterproof and the concrete that was poured for the base as well as how I built the curb and everything, none of it is waterproof before you get going. You can just towel directly over this stuff and it will last for a while, but for a true professional way to tile a shower, you want it to be completely waterproof. So I use two different products. This one is from Lowe's. I can link in the description below. It's a waterproof membrane that also, it's basically a rubber membrane that you paint on using a roller or a paintbrush. It's pretty simple, dries super quick. I did about three coats on the entire shower as well as the shower base and the curb itself. Um, just to make sure everything was nice and rubber and sealed. And then, as you are putting all the cement board up, um, you, you don't have a perfect seal at the bottom, and then you don't have a perfect seal in some of the seams as well. So there's two different methods that you can solve that. If it's a really small gap, like these corners, I just use some waterproof caulking before I use the waterproof membrane uh, to paint over top of it. But for bigger gaps, I use this that I got on Amazon. It's uh, by a brand called Curdy. They actually sell complete shower kits that you can buy, but for a cheap DIY version of it, I just went around the corners and used some thin set to kind of cake the top and the side of the wall. And then I folded this in half and kind of creased it in there. If you've ever done drywall before, it's the same kind of method. Um, and then once it was on there, I used the waterproof membrane again to go over top of it to make sure it was nice and sealed in every corner, every crevice, everywhere that water could seep through. So that is the number one tip 
that I would want to know before I get started. All right, tip number two, use the correct thin set or mortar. So this is an example of what is probably the easiest to find in Lowe's or Home Depot. There's different brands, but it's a pre-mixed mortar. I use this for our laundry room project or other tiling projects that are not in a water environment. Um, you don't want to use this in the shower. It tends to take way too long to dry and there'll be pockets that will be potentially wet for a long time. And so this is not the correct thin set for tiling a shower. Even though it's cheap and easy because it's pre-mixed, you want to get a specific mortar for the type of tile that you're using. So we have this glass tile that we're using on the wall, as you can see. So we had to go out and find a specific glass mortar that you mix in a bucket with water. It has great instructions on the back side um, and it will last the ages if you use the correct mortar with the correct type of tile. So for instance, I will have to go out and get a different mortar for the shower floor because we're going to use a ceramic uh, kind of small two by two squares. So that has a completely different mortar. That's something that when I walked into Lowe's for the first time and about to start tiling or floor and decor, I had no clue that you needed to get a specific type of mortar for the specific type of tile that you're using in the shower. All right, the third tip and probably one of the most important ones, not that they aren't all important, is how do we get these straight level lines in our shower? It was a mystery to me the first time I did a shower. I was very confused because typical shower, if you can, let me get some stuff out of the way. If you can tell in the video, the bottom where the shower pan meets the shower wall is not completely level. It's kind of concaved and that's so that water will pour into the drain in the middle. And so there needs to be a slope. And so the, the shower basin all the way around is not level. And you can see I did not start tiling until almost a full piece above the first row because if you start on the bottom of the shower, your lines are gonna match that concaved kind of unevenness. So the way to solve for this is to get a piece of scrap, like this is one by two, I think, um, just some poplar, I believe, that I got in the trimming area. And I used a laser level to make sure it was completely level when I started this back wall. And then I attached it to the wall itself and started from there. The other thing is um, tile has a lot of weight on it. And as you kind of stack all of this tile as you go, you can imagine how much weight is kind of sitting on that first row. So you want to have something nice and solid and level to start that basis on. So you tile all the way up to the ceiling and then after you've got all of the sides pretty much completely finished, you can see I haven't finished, even started this wall yet. Once you have it all set, then you go back and cut each individual piece to fit the molding of the bottom of the pan. So tip number four, when you're starting to tile, as you can see uh, behind me, all the lines are super straight up and down. Um, vertically as well as horizontally which we covered how to do the horizontal piece but how do we do the vertical piece right so when I first started tiling the first job I did um, I thought you were supposed to start in the corner and work your way across the wall little did I know that that is the wrong way to do it uh, because when you start in the corner, there's no guarantee that that corner or the wall, if you will, is perfectly straight or level up and down. So if you do that, you chance um, 
having a completely pretty much wonky set of tiles. So what I did was once I got the bottom level and set um, that first row done, I set a laser level, which I'll link in the description below, a link to an affiliate link to buy. Um, it's a super handy tool for all kinds of projects, um, but you can check that out below. I used a laser level to mark the center of the grout line for the center of the, the tile wall. So then as I went up, I started on that center piece and worked my way out until I filled in the entire wall. And then whatever you have to do on the side is to cut and trim depending on how slanted or wonky your walls are. Uh, so be it, for the most part, that's gonna be covered up by grout or another tile or caulking or something like that in the corner. But the key is to make sure that laser level is in there so you have a perfectly straight line to reference. And tip number five that I wish I knew before I started tiling is don't just start cutting with your tile saw, especially if it's like a little chunk like this. I don't know if you can see in the video. I think you can see that it chipped the glass just all over the place. It, that will happen or it will tear up the, the paper backing on the back that actually has the color for these glass tiles. And so my tip for this one is grab some masking tape, some painter's tape, whatever you have laying around and wrap it around the piece of tile. I know it's an extra step, but it's totally worth it to get a clean line to cut, especially when if it's down the middle, it's not quite as big of a deal for some reason, but these edge cuts that are really small tend to splinter super easily. So I'll show you the, the with masking tape cut versus without masking tape cut, and then we'll compare. The other benefit is it gives you somewhere to draw the line on with these glass tiles. Uh, you can draw it on the back, but it's just something that you can have a clear line to cut, which is really nice. Uh, I think you can see it pretty well. This one is the one that I didn't use the tape, and this one I used the tape, and man, it just makes such a difference. All right, I know I said five, but here's a little bonus tip. Use this by a brand named Curdy Schluter. Um, it's an edging product that makes it so you don't have to worry about cutting perfectly every piece on the edge and it just gives a super clean look and feel. So all you have to do is put a layer of thin set that you're already gonna put down anyway on the edge, line it up with the edge of where you want your tile to be and then you butt up the edge of the tile directly to this edge makes it super clean, super professional looking. And this stuff in particular that I typically use, you can actually just cut with plastic or scissors because it's plastic. They do sell a metal product as well if you want a little bit more sturdy, but since this is just gonna be on a vertical wall and there's not gonna be like people stepping on it, this thing's perfect. So there is a little bonus. 
Well, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks so much for watching. We have some exciting things in the works right now. Um, I have been really busy working on those and so I haven't made much video content, but I promise there's going to be a ton of fun projects coming up and some potential surprises for some of you guys that have been watching. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.